Welcome to Impact Church Online. Grab your favorite cup of coffee, get snuggled in, and get ready for a great word. Yes, 
Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed worshiping with us. I know that Pastor has a word for each and every one of us this morning. And grab a cup of coffee, open your Bibles, open your hearts and open your ears and get ready to receive what the Lord has for you this morning. All right. Well, welcome to Church Online. I know this is a brand new thing. I know some, there are some of you that when you've been out of town, you've watched online. Uh, but we are in a different setting right now. But we're excited about what God's going to do even during this season of our church and what we're walking through and experiencing really for the first time. And I want to encourage you right now, um, where you are, wherever you're watching from, to click the share button and share this experience, share this service with your Facebook friends. Uh, send it to someone that you think might need some encouragement. It's a great way for us to interact um, on social media and interact with people that maybe wouldn't come to church in a physical building, <clears throat> but in a situation like this, uh, somebody that might find uh, hope and encouragement. And so I encourage you to share this experience right now so that we can reach as many people as possible for Jesus. And another thing before we get started into what I feel like God wants me to share with you this weekend is uh, use the likes and the hearts and uh, the comment section there at the bottom of your screen if you're watching on a phone or a laptop or uh, an iPad or some other tablet and let us know uh, what you're thinking. Be engaged, interact um, just as you would on a Sunday morning. You know, shoot out some amens and some hearts and likes and let's interact together during this time uh, that we have. And so uh, I'm going to jump right into what I feel like God wants me to share with you for this weekend specifically and the way that really everything has been uh, transpiring with the coronavirus and uh, details. It seems like every single day there are more details coming out, more information coming out, more cases that are coming out. And on Monday of this past week, as I was just praying and we were heading into the week from last weekend, I was praying about, God, what do you want to say? What do you want to speak? And I just knew that he was wanting me to uh, really take a break from the series that we've been in and just speak a word that I know came from him uh, that I just began to make notes on. And I want to be an encouragement to you today to bring hope today, uh, to maybe point some things out today that you may know. But at the same time, it's easy to, for us to forget or uh, to be fearful in times like these. And so... Um, I was praying about this, and the Holy Spirit reminded me of this story in the book of Mark in the Bible. And Jesus has been teaching this crowd of people by a lake. And when he finishes teaching, he's been teaching for a little while, he finishes teaching. And as soon as he finishes teaching, he turns around to his disciples. And that's where we're going to pick the story up in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. It says, That evening Jesus said to his followers, Let's go across the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him in the boat just as he was. There were also other boats with them. A very strong wind came up on the lake. The waves came over the sides and into the boat so that it was already full of water. Jesus was at the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a cushion. His followers woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and it became completely calm. Jesus said to his followers, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The followers were very afraid and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Today, uh, on this Sunday morning, I want to talk to you for just a few moments on this topic. I've titled this message, Staying Steady Through the Storm. Staying Steady Through the Storm. And as always, I want to remind you that in this moment, you can still find these notes and, and take notes on the Bible app if you want to do that as well. Um, as I read through this story again on Monday, I could see how for many of us, it may seem like what's been going on over the last couple of weeks can feel like uh, waves that are crashing into our boat. Maybe we, we, we thought we had life figured out. We kind of had found our rhythm. We knew how things were going to go, and now kids are out of school, and, and everything seems uncertain. Um, it could seem like we're really going to drown in everything that's going on. I don't know where you feel uh, you're at right now in this season of life and what's going on in the world around us, but I'll begin to think, man, for many of us, it can feel like there are waves crashing into our boat, that we're going to drown in the middle of this, and is there anybody that really even cares? And I was thinking about maybe for some of you, you're thinking about, what, what about my business? 
What about my kids? What about my church? What about my job? What about having enough food? What if it gets worse before it actually gets better? And it would be easy for us right now, based on everything that we're hearing, everything that we're watching, everything that we're seeing, for us to slip into fear uh, instead of faith. It would be easy for us to maybe forget some things that we've known all along. Uh, In uncertain times, we can slip into this place of fear instead of into this place of faith. And I don't believe that that's how God has called us to respond during this time. And so there are four things this morning that I believe the Lord wants me to share with you during this time. And I'm going to go through several scriptures that I hope will encourage you and and bring hope to your heart today. But here's point number one. The first thing, uh, the first truth is that God has made you a promise. God has made you a promise. And not only has God made you a promise, God has made you promises. Um, I think about Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3 where uh, it says, I promised Moses I would give you this land, so I will give you every place you go in the land. And God is is sharing with Joshua. I've already told Moses I was going to give. This has already been promised to you. And so everywhere that you go, you are going to possess that land. And if you understand the context of what's happening in this verse, you understand that this is, this is a promise that has already been made that is now being confirmed in Joshua, through Joshua, what is about to take place as we read through the book of Joshua in the Bible. And so my question to you today during this time is simply, what has God promised you? If God has made you a promise, God has made you multiple promises. And I know in times like this, it may be hard to remember those. It may be hard to focus on those in the midst of this. But what has God promised you? In His Word, we see many promises, but here's just a few, just a few promises that I want to point out to you today that I hope will be an encouragement to you during this time. Joshua, just a couple of verses later in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, he says, No one will be able to defeat you all your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forget you. Some translations that we're familiar with say, I will never leave you or forsake you. And just like he promised Joshua, God has promised you and me that he is never going to leave you and he is never going to forsake you. He is never going to forget you. God sees right where you are are. Right now, whether you're sitting in a chair, sitting on the couch, up doing things while you're listening to this, whatever the case might be, however you're feeling in your heart, in your mind, whatever's going on in your family right now, God knows where you are and He has already said, I will never leave you and I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. Another verse and another promise I think about is in Romans 8, 28 that many of us are familiar with. And The Bible says, we know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love Him. They are the people He called because that was His plan. God has already promised us that He doesn't waste anything. No matter what we're walking through right now, if you were to think back in your life over the last 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, there have been seasons and times and difficulties that you've walked through, things that have happened in your life that you have made it to the other side of. And we know this to be true, that God never wastes anything. He takes every experience, everything, if we'll give it to Him, and He will use it for our good. He will turn it around for good. And I believe that even during this time, even during this season, God is going to use this for good. God is going to do something with this that we will see that will work together for good. Another one that I think about is Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. It says, So no weapon that is used against you will defeat you. You will show that those who speak against you are wrong. These are the good things my servants receive. Their victory comes from me, says the Lord. Even though weapons may be formed against you, even though uncertainty may come about, even though you may be walking through a time right now that you have never experienced before, that that none of us really in recent history have ever experienced or walked through anything like this, you can know today that no weapon formed against you, nothing that comes against you will prosper. Nothing will defeat you. Um, God has already said that that nothing that's formed against you will prosper. No matter what weapon is formed against you as a believer, your victory comes from the Lord. I, I love the second part of that verse. We don't quote it a lot, but it says, let me read it again. So no weapon that is used against you will defeat you. You will show that those who speak against you are wrong. These are the good things my servants receive. 
Their victory comes from me, says the Lord. Your victory over this situation in this time comes from God. It's not us relying on ourselves. It's us looking back at the promises that God has already made where we can find hope, we can find truth, we can find encouragement during this time. And so it's important during this time to remember that God has made you some promises and He intends to keep them. Whatever promises God has made to you, He intends to keep the promises that He's made. Here's point number two for you today. It's simply that fear is not from God. Fear is not from God. And the most common verse that many of us use regarding this is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And this is what Paul writes to Timothy. He says, God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. But here's another passage of Scripture that I want to read to you today that I think will be encouraging and something that Jesus Himself said that I believe uh, can be an encouragement during this time. And it's in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25, going through verse 32. He says, So I tell you, don't worry about the food or drink you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. And you know that you are worth much more than the birds. You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. And why do you worry about clothes? Look at how the lilies in the field grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves, but I tell you that even Solomon with his riches was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. God clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today, but tomorrow is thrown into the fire. So you can be even more sure that God will clothe you. Don't have so little faith. Don't worry and say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? The people who don't know God tr keep trying to get these things, and your Father in heaven knows you need them. Can I just tell you today that your Father in heaven knows what you need? He knows how you're feeling. He knows what's going on in the world. We've said it multiple times. God is still in control. God knows what's going on. He knows exactly what you need. This is not a time to allow selfishness to take over. This is a time to be selfless. This is not a time to isolate and really forget about others. We're called to love and to serve during this time of need. Uh, it's not a time to, to pull back and a time to... Uh, really just isolate ourselves, but figure out ways, even during this time, how we can serve and we can love the people around us. Check on elderly neighbors or share what you have with those in need. There are ways that we can still be the church and follow the guidelines that are set in place. We can still do this. Fear is not from God. God has not given us a spirit of fear. We have to remind ourselves that, that we can continue to walk in faith knowing that God's in control. Even when things seem uncertain, even when we don't know what tomorrow holds, even when we don't know what's coming in the future, we can still have faith knowing that our God is good, our God is faithful, that fear is not from Him. He does not give us a spirit of fear. He wants us to walk in faith, to walk in faith. Here's point number three for you today to encourage you is that peace is from God. While fear is not from God, peace is from God. In John 14, 27 the Bible says, I leave you peace. This is Jesus speaking. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world does. So don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Jesus is saying, listen, the peace that I give you is not a peace that, that you can even understand. It's not a peace that you can get from somebody else. It is a peace that is, is, is so important for you to have that I can even say it in this way. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be Afraid. What a great reminder of why we don't have to be troubled during this time. We don't have to be fearful during this time. We can activate the peace that Jesus has already deposited in us today. Psalm 34, 4 says, I asked the Lord for help and He answered me. He saved me from all that I feared. We have the ability to go directly to our Heavenly Father and to take all of our cares, all of our worries to Him uh, and allow Him to, to bring us peace, allow Him to activate the peace inside of us and to remove fear from our lives during this time. We can experience God's peace. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks. 
And God's peace, which is so great we cannot understand it. I love that, that God's peace, this peace we're talking about that comes from God is so great that you cannot even understand it. We try to understand it. We try to to comprehend how in this moment can I have so much peace in this season? How can I get to that place? Listen, you're not going to be able to understand how God can bring you so much peace, but He can. This peace is so great we cannot understand it. It will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And it's important for us to know really that these verses go together. And this peace that God wants to give us, that He wants us to experience even during this time, when we make the choice to pray and to give thanks to God, it activates the peace that He has given us. When you take the time to pray instead of worry, to give thanks instead of being fearful, for who God is, what He's done for you, how He's brought you through all of these these situations and different things that you've experienced in your life before, then it activates the peace that God wants to give you in your heart and in your life. The peace that He wants us to have is a peace that we cannot even understand. This is the peace that we can have right now in the middle of difficult, uncertain times, but it comes when we turn our worry into prayer and thankfulness. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 says, You, Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust you. You give peace to those who depend on you because they trust you. Let me ask you a question. In the middle of this uh, pandemic, in the middle of, of, of everything that wants to overtake you, fear that wants to overtake you, do you still trust God? Right now, where you're sitting, where you're standing, can you say, I still trust God because God's peace comes whenever we say, you know what, no matter what, God, I'm trusting you. I know that you're good. I know that you're faithful. I know that you're going to see us through this as well. God desires for us to walk and rest in his peace by depending on him and trusting in him, which leads me to the fourth and final point today is simply this. We can trust God in uncertainty. We can trust God in uncertainty. It's probably true that these last couple of weeks and as you look into the future uh, are possibly maybe even the most uncertain you may have ever felt in your life. Maybe you've never really experienced anything like this. Maybe, uh, maybe this is something that even though you've been through something in the past, this is something new for you. This is something we don't understand. This is, this is something that we've, we've never seen coming and it can seem like it's very, very uncertain. But let me show you through God's Word in uh, just a couple of verses that we can continue to trust God no matter what. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, many of us know this. It says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding. Remember the Lord in all you do and He will give you success. Let me encourage you today. We may not understand what's going on around us. We may not understand why this is happening and, and why it's causing us to, to this fear to rise up in us, but Listen, God's Word says that you don't need to rely on your own understanding. Another another, uh, verse in Isaiah says, Listen, God's ways are higher. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. We may not understand right now. We may fully never understand what's going on in our world right now, what's going on in our community and in our country right now. But we can rely on God. We can still trust God even in the middle of everything being uncertain. Psalm 56 and verse 3, when I am afraid, I will trust you. And some of us in this moment need to stop and just declare as David did that even when I'm afraid, I'm going to trust you. And maybe you need to put that on your mirror. You need to put that on the walls in your house or on your phone as a reminder to just every single day, even though I may be fearful, even though I'm walking through uncertainty, I will trust you. When I am afraid, I will trust you. Isaiah 41, 13 says, I am the Lord your God who holds your right hand and I tell you, don't be afraid. I will help you. What an encouragement to know that that you are in the hand of God, that God is still in control of all things and you don't have really a reason to be afraid because God is still in control. He's going to help you through this time. In 1 Peter 5, 7 it says, give all your worries to Him because He cares for you. Give all of your worries. Let me encourage you today. Give all of your worries to God. Why? Because He cares about you. He cares more about you than you can even comprehend right now. God is looking out for you. God cares about you. 
I want to go back to Mark chapter 4 and the story that we started with of Jesus and the disciples and they're in this boat and the storm comes about and, and there are the waves that are crashing into the boat and uh, you know, they're fearful. They're waking Jesus up. You know, do you not even care that we're going to drown? And there's all of this fear, all of this uncertainty that's surrounding them. And, and when the storm was raging, this is how they responded. Starting back in verse 38, it says, Jesus was at the back of the boat sleeping with his head on a cushion. Isn't it interesting that Jesus was sleeping in the middle of the storm? Uh, that Jesus, what we can receive from Jesus today is the ability to be sleeping and resting in the middle of the storm. His followers woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? And Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and it became completely calm. Jesus said to his followers, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And the followers were very afraid. And they asked each other. They looked at each other. They started talking to each other. And they said, Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? And here's something important for you to know today, that the God that we serve commands the winds and the waves, that everything obeys Him. Everything is at His command. So we don't have to be fearful. So what does this mean for you and me? It simply means this, if Jesus is in your boat, then the reality is that you have nothing to fear. If, Jesus, if you stop for just a moment, and you remember that I'm a believer, I'm a, I'm a follower of Jesus, He is in my boat. I don't have anything to be afraid of. In the middle of uncertainty, I can trust Him. I know that fear does not come from Him. I know that He brings peace. I know that He has made me promises that He intends to keep. I don't have to be afraid because Jesus, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, is in my boat. And I wanna pray for you as we end today. And I want to pray even for those of you that may be watching right now that maybe you've never invited Jesus into your boat. And during this time, you know, I, I need to have Jesus in my boat. I need Jesus into my life. I need to be able to receive and experience this peace in the midst of uncertainty and, and have someone that I know that has promised me these things that I can trust, that I can rely on, that I can lean into. And so if you will, if that's you and you're watching right now and you say, you know what? I need to invite Jesus into my boat. I need to give my life to Jesus, I need to ask Him to come into my heart, then I want to pray this prayer, and I just want you to repeat this prayer after me, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're standing, wherever you're watching from. And I believe that right there where you are, God's going to meet you, and that Jesus is going to save you, and that He's going to come into your boat, and you won't have to be afraid. So let's pray this prayer together. Just say, Jesus, thank you for, for dying for me. Thank you for loving me enough to give your life up for me. And in the middle of uncertainty, in the middle of how I'm feeling right now, I know that I need you. And so today, I want to receive you into my life. I want to give you my life today. So I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again on the third day so that I could have a life, so that I could be forgiven. So I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come live inside of me. God, thank you for sending your son just for me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And for those of you that are watching that maybe you know that Jesus is in your boat and right now you are, you, you're just reminding yourself, I would encourage you that over the next week, just remind yourself that Jesus is in your boat. You don't have anything really to be afraid of. And so I want to pray for you as we dismiss. And uh, I know that you're going to have a great week, that God is going to be with you. Uh, even though these are uncertain times, you don't have to be fearful. You can trust God. So let me pray for you. God, we thank you today for the opportunity to even gather in creative ways. We thank you for the gift of technology to be able to still have uh, service together and interact together and encourage each other in times like these. Lord, we thank you for the words that you've given us that we can read daily to remind ourselves we have hope, we have good things in store um, God, that you are for us, you are not against us. If you're for us, then who can be against us? That no weapon formed against us will prosper. That if you are inside of our boat, we don't have anything to be afraid of. So God, I pray that you would just infuse every person that's watching right now with your peace, with your comfort. Lord, that there would be a renewed sense of, of trust in you. 
that we would rely on you right now like we never have before in our entire lives. God, we know that you are good and that you are faithful until the end. So God, we place our trust in you. We place our hope in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you guys. We hope you have a great week. God is for you. Uh, Be blessed this week. Don't be afraid. Trust God. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday right back here, 10 a.m. for Church Online.